Extra time's granted. Thank you. Um, we, we cannot have a situation where we have continued division in some communities that believe that faith is being singled out in trying to deal with the threat of, ex of extremism. This is simply not the case. People of goodwill and of, um, uh, from all different backgrounds want to work to deal with this, and we do need to, uh, to deal with this issue. Um, there are people in the community, in the Australian today, on the front page of The Australian, detailed a very moving story, I thought, of a father who felt shamed by the actions of his son in taking up an extremist path and going to do uh, terrible things in Syria. Um, this is a person who found, uh, as most migrants do, um, what Australia has provided for, opportunity and an ability to look at your children with pride and say, you are going to have a better life than I had. And you're going to have a better life than what um, you know, we would have had if I had stayed home. And so for us, as I often say, for migrants and the children of migrants, we feel an enormous debt of gratitude to this nation that we have been given an opportunity to live in a way, not just in a material sense, but to not live with the fear of persecution, not to live in the fear of conflict, not to live in the fear that we can't be the best we can be because we're not extended the type of privileges that are granted by a democratic nation like this. So if we accept there is a debt of gratitude that must be repaid in this nation, then we cannot sit back and think that it's someone else's job to fulfil that debt. We all have a part to play. So beyond urging people not to take up the path of extremism, let us also identify that extremism and deal with it. We shouldn't just wait for the government to hand out money to deal with this, as much as I welcome the commitment that has been made by the Prime Minister on this front.